car free, 170 over water. Little seven iron, I reckon. Oh God, oh no. That's embarrassing. Hello everyone, Coach Lockie here. In this video, yeah, we're talking about puring your irons and I've got three top tips to help you strike your irons better. Before we get stuck into those top tips though, it's giveaway time. And what is in the goodie bag? Well, hello. That's not who I think it is, is it? Mr. Lumpy? That's right, Mr. Lumpy is up for grabs. So if you want to win this Callaway X4's UT driving iron, used by me, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And in the comments down below, I need you to write down what your greens and regulations stat is. If you don't know it, just write down how many greens you hit in your last round. Right, let's get back striking our irons pure. So if you struggle with striking your irons, you're probably thinning and fatting those shots quite a lot. What fat in the golf ball means is when you hit the ground before the ball, you generally get a big divot and the ball doesn't go very far. And thinning the golf ball is when you hit the ball with this leading edge of the club. And that's a similar pattern. Your club bottoms out, so it hits the lowest point of its arc before the golf ball and then rises and hits this leading edge of the golf club. You can also thin it when you come down too steep and have your low point way too far in front of the golf ball too. Those thin shots can really sting your fingers as well. So how do we get away from those kind of shots and start striking our irons a bit purer? Well, tip number one is ball position. Now, ball position is dynamic. You need to be able to change ball position to hit different types of shots. So if you need to hit a low shot under a tree, you might put your ball position back. If you need to hit higher over a tree, you need to be able to put your ball position forward. I've got a seven iron in my hands here, and generally speaking, that's gonna be in the middle of our stance. So on your sternum, on your zip, on your belt buckle, whatever point of reference you wanna make, just make sure that it's in the middle of your stance. And when I say middle, I'm referencing the back of the golf ball being in the middle of my stance, where the club's gonna be striking that ball. And this changes slightly depending on what iron you've got in your hand. So more lofted clubs, you would have the back of the ball slightly behind your sternum. As you go up to your mid irons, nine, eight, sevens, you're gonna be going more on your sternum with the back of the golf ball. And as you creep up to your six, and if you've got five irons, four irons, three irons, it's gonna move about a ball forward of your sternum. So next time you're practicing on the golf course or on the range, just check where that ball position is for you. Generally speaking, when people aren't striking their irons well enough, that ball position tends to creep forward. And more often than not, what I see is people having their ball position way too far forward when they're not striking their irons properly. In lessons, it's way too far forward. That means that your club's gonna be bottoming out at its low point way before the golf ball, and that's where you're gonna catch the ball heavy. And if you're training yourself and skilled enough to stop striking the ground first and you get your low point a little higher, that means that it's going to bottom out, start rising up, catch the middle of the golf ball and there's your thin shots as well. Here's a quick little guide to help you get your ball position correct every time. If reference points don't help with your ball position, I want you to stand every time as you're set up to the golf ball with your feet together. And then you're gonna move your front foot first, and then you're gonna move your trail foot second. And how much you move them will help get your ball position in the right spot. So first of all, I've got seven iron in my hands here. I'm gonna go two steps, exactly the same amount, and that will give me my ball position in the middle with my mid irons. If I've got a more lofted club in my hands, to get that ball position slightly back of those mid irons, because I've got more loft, I'm gonna go slightly bigger step with my front foot and a smaller step with my trail foot. That will get my ball position slightly behind my sternum. And lastly, the long irons. You've probably guessed it. Stand with your feet together, put the club behind your ball. That back of the ball is on the middle of my sternum and I'm gonna go small step with my front foot and bigger step with my trail foot. This will get the ball position slightly forward with my irons. Why do we need different ball positions with these different lofts? Each one's gonna have a different angle of attack 
and a different spin loft. So to get the right launches and the right spins, we need those ball positions to be in a slightly different spot. So there's tip number one to help striking these irons a little purer. I've got my seven iron in my hands again here. So ball position, back of the ball on my sternum or in the middle of my feet. I'm gonna step with my lead foot, same amount with my trail foot, and that will get my ball position with this mid iron in the right spot. Now, Will, that helped me strike it a little bit better. Nice strike, just slightly right of the pin. Dead straight ball flight though. Oh yes, birdie putt. Tip number two, weight distribution and how you're pushing in that ground. What I see a lot of my students that struggle with striking their irons and lots of other amateurs is that you're staying back too much in your downswing. So your sternum is behind the golf ball, your low points behind that golf ball, and again, we get those fats and thin shots. What I also tend to see with this sort of pattern is people have an open club face and too much loft, or a combination of both. If you're someone that has a high fady ball flight, then you're someone with that open, high lofted club. And to try and find target, you're basically trying to get this club to catch up, square the face up to try and start it online and find your target. And to help do that, you stay back, get that club catching up, and there's your sternum behind that golf ball again. If you were to get your weight and sternum in the correct position, we would see your ball start right, go high and further right. So if you're struggling to strike your irons, and if you do strike one well, it goes high and to the right. If you're a right-handed golfer, try and sort your club face out first. Otherwise, this next tip will only make you hit it right and a little bit further right. <laughs> People that aren't struggling with that high right shot, but just wanna try and strike the ball a little bit better. I want you, again, I got my seven iron in my hands here, so ball positions in the middle. Once you're set up, I want you to feel like your weight is slightly on your lead side, 55, 60%. And as you're taking the club back, I want you to feel like that stays there or even slightly increases. That'll really help you stay on top of the golf ball, keep your sternum on that golf ball and get that low point in the right spot. If you're on the driving range or practicing, don't be scared to exaggerate this feeling. Go 70% on your front foot, 80% and see what it does to your strike. The whole point of this is to get your low point on or ahead of that golf ball. It will eliminate those fat shots, I assure you. And if you really over exaggerate it, you'll still get a slight thin and then you'll just have to bring it back and not exaggerated. And that'll also get rid of your thin shots as well. So start with your weight slightly on your lead side, 55, 60%. And as you're taking the club back, feel like it stays there or even increases, goes onto your front toes. That pressure is going into the ground on my lead foot toe here. And then try and keep it there. Keep your chest over the golf ball, compress that ball and strike those irons a bit purer. Let's give it another go. See if I can hit the green again, shall we? Ball position middle, weight slightly on my lead side. Increase it and stay on that side as I'm doing my back swing. And let's see if I can strike this one. Really good strike, just a slight pull. Will it catch a piece? Oh, just off the left side of the green, but that strike was really, really solid. And lastly, I'm gonna give you a little drill to think about and to take to the driving range, or if you've got a net to practice in, however you practice, this drill will help you, give you a visual idea and use those two first tips to really strike these irons a bit better. I've grabbed my bag towel. I'm gonna to fold it up a couple of times. I'm gonna pop it two club heads back from my golf ball. So that's really going to make me feel like I can't stay back, otherwise I'm gonna catch the towel before the golf ball. It's gonna really make me think that I wanna stay on top of it and miss that towel to make sure that my low point stays forward. This is a great drill to help you 
with full position and that second tip especially of keeping your weight forward, keeping your chest over the golf ball and not allowing you to drift back behind that golf ball. If you do something like this drill already, what do you use in the comments down below? Do you use your towel or do you have something sneaky in your bag that you just pop out when you're at the range to help you strike these irons better? And again, you can go as extreme as you want with a drill like this. If you go only a club face behind the ball, it will make you really want to stay on top of it and come down. But then again, you're probably going to head more towards those thin shots. So um, have a kind of happy medium, two club heads back from your ball. That's a little bit too much, actually. How thick you make your towel will also depend on how far back you want it also. But it's just a great way and visual to help you stay on top of it, like we talked about in tip two, to stop those fats and thins. Another great strike. I'm liking the left side of this green, aren't I? That's gonna catch a piece though. That's another birdie putt. So there you go, a few tips and a drill to try and strike your irons better. Let me know in the comments down below if any of these tips and drills help your game or what you do to try and help your irons and improve them. Just remember, majority of golfers are missing a high percentage of greens. So any increase in striking these irons better and hitting more greens and regulations, your scores are hopefully only going to improve. So again, in the comments down below, what's your favorite drill? And do you do one that helps your game? I'd love to know. And maybe I can do a video on those to help other golfers also. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next video.